Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for their stock pick of the day video. It is December 12th. Today we are going to take a look at Cummins. We have reviewed this on the channel before, but I thought it was worth revisiting. So let's jump right in. If you want to know more about this company, check them out at www.cummins.com. That's www.cummins.com. And what is Cummings? Well, they are an industrial company. They manufacture engines, generators, and power systems. Accelera, this is actually their uh, hydrogen and electric uh, vehicle and motors sector here. And components for all of the motors and generators that they uh, produce and provide to customers in the construction industry, highway uh, industry, right? Uh, big trucks, any of that, uh, small trucks, you have, uh, F-250s, I think some of them have the Cummings motors in, Dodge has Cummings in there, some of their pickups, uh, I believe it's not Dodge anymore, Solaris, uh, they changed their name quite a bit, but Dodge trucks anyway, uh, some of the big rigs you see out there delivering your food, Again, if you drive by any construction sites, a lot of the big tractors and equipment that you see out there uh, might have their engines in them and generators. We are actually swapping out some generators, building generators uh, for one of the sites that we own, my company owns. We have several generators and Cummings will be Cummings will be the company that we are buying our new generators from. And then this is really their push into the future, their hydrogen cell technology, electrical cell technology, uh, so not only do they produce the old, you know, diesel generators and diesel engines, but they do have their hands in future technology as well. And then again, all the components that go along with what they provide from generators and engines. www.cummins.com. That is their homepage. Check them out there if you are interested. And the reason we we're taking a look at them down 0.28%, not a big drop on the day, but down nonetheless. We are talking about Cummins Inc. ticker CMI out of the industrial sector. Closed out the day at $234.66. I'd like them at $2.34, but that's not where they're at. 52-week range as low as $203.18, as high as $265.28. They are right in the middle of their 52-week high and 52-week low. Average volume, $779,000. Today was $423,000 little less than their average market cap of 33.262 billion a beta of 1.04 so they are just slightly more volatile than the overall market price to earnings ratio pe ratio sitting at eleven dollars and 95 cents that's low eps one of the few companies we've seen this before but it's not very often where the earnings per share the eps is higher than their price to earnings right $19.63 per share. Very, very nice to see that. I like that. Anytime you get the earnings per share higher than the price to earnings ratio, that is nice in my opinion. Earnings date February 5th through February 9th. So tune in to that if you're interested. For dividend, $6.72. They are quarterly payer. We'll see that here in a minute. Very nice starting dividend yield at 2.86%. X dividend date November 22nd. They did pay out on December 7th. So kudos to those of you who owned the shares before the December or before the November 22nd date and a one-year target estimate at least according to Yahoo Finance of $254.79 so they see some upside appreciation in the stock price on this one low payout ratio 32.55 percent so a lot of runway to increase that dividend over over time and even though they have a starting dividend at 2.86 percent nice starting dividend low payout overall I like to get into the statistics, look at dividend yield theory to do that. You click on statistics, go down to dividends and splits. Look at their five-year dividend yield average, 2.69%. Compare it to their current 2.86% or over here for an annual dividend, 2.86%, same number. And since it is higher, that speaks to some undervaluation on this one, right? So this one is potentially undervalued, at least according to dividend yield theory. Yahoo Finance sees some potential upside in the price appreciation over the next year. Now, you want to also get into the financials whenever you're buying any individual stocks, balance sheet, income statement, you're going to find there a lot of good information. Is their revenue growing? Are their margins growing? Are they paying down debt? What are their assets over liabilities look like? You want more assets over liabilities, right? All this is good information you'll find in our financials. You'll also find free cash flow and you want to look at free cash flow for dividend companies because I, I personally want growing dividends. Hopefully you do too. And typically when a company has growing free cash flow, they pay out growing dividends. So we went back to 2019. 
2.4 billion in free cash flow. 2020 was a bit of a drop to 2.1 billion. 2021, a bigger drop to 1.4 billion. 2022, another drop to 1 billion. And it looks like at least to date in 23, right around 1 billion. Overall, it looks like a decline from 2019 to date though they are repurchasing their own shares and some of this decline in 2021 can be accounted for or 2020 to 2021 can be accounted for because they more than doubled their repurchase of shares in this one though that does not account for the drop in 2021 to 2022 so you might be getting them at a low for free cash flow here and keep in mind a company like this is cyclical if the economy is doing well and we're doing a lot of building you know companies are going out buying new equipment new tractors that need new motors new uh new generators for their businesses then a company like this will typically be doing well if we have a slowdown in the economy typically a company like this will not do so well so it is a cyclical company in nature keep that in mind and it looks like we may be at the bottom of a cycle for this one but that may mean it's time for a reverse and a run back up. We'll see overall free cash flow does look like it's declining. So that may be something to be concerned with. Now, I always recommend more than one source. So another one that I like is stockanalysis.com. You pick any sources that you like. Just make sure you're not just looking at one. You want to make sure that the information you're getting is accurate and back check to make sure it's up to date. So according to nine stock analysts, they call this a consensus buy, though it is right there on the edge of a buy and a hold. So right there, just slightly over into the buy range. They have a low estimate of $227. That would be a 3.24% decrease from where it currently sits. They have an average estimate of $259.67. That's pretty close to what we saw with Yahoo Finance on the previous page. That would be a 10.68% increase from where it currently sits. And if it happened to hit their high, of $290, that would be a 23.61% increase. And all the while you could collect that 2.86% dividend yield, at least if you were to buy them now. Now I'd like to get into the statistics here and look at return on invested capital and return on equity. See how the company is doing with the funds they are reinvesting back into themselves. And I like 10% or better for both metrics. Return on equity is sitting at 28.3%, beats the 10% I'm looking for, and return on invested capital sitting at 15.17%, also beats the 10% I'm looking for. So overall, numbers are looking good on this one. I look at EPS growth, I'm looking for 5% or better. It's at 5.91, with revenue forecasted to grow at 5.75%. Again, overall, numbers look really good at this on this one. I would like them to pull back a little bit closer to their 52-week low, 227 or under this one did drop i think we looked at this one maybe back in september and it was right around the same price 230 233 somewhere in there it did drop from that time uh, down to about 217 and it has since come back up so if you had been buying it you know from about september on you've gotten it at a pretty under this lowest estimate here at, at times and at a pretty good buy-in price. I would say this is about max. This is probably close to fair value, even though dividend yield theory says it's a little undervalued. This is probably about as high. It might go up to 240, 245, but anything over that, I think you're getting a little heavy on this one. So anything under 240, I think on this one might be a good buy entry. Uh, you do your own due diligence on that, find a, a, a buy-in point that you're at, but I wouldn't pay much more than what it currently sits at. But I do think it still is attractive if you're looking for something in the industrial space. I like this company. I like the dividend growth. I like that they their metrics overall look very well. Might be uh, one to wait for a better pullback. Now let's look at the dividends. 34.23% uh, payout. I think it said 33 on Yahoo Finance. So, you know, right around 33% payout ratio, low payout ratio, lots of room to increase their dividend. And they are 7.62% dividend growth year over year. So very nice dividend growth on this one. Going back to 20. 20, November 2020, they were paying $1.35. August 2021, they jumped it up to $1.45. August 2022, they jumped it up to $1.57. And August 2023, most recent raise, they jumped it up to $1.68. I would not anticipate another dividend raise until August of 2024. But if they maintain it, I would expect something around this 7 to 8% dividend growth. They do pay out in the March, June, September, December timeframe, like a lot of companies do. But very interesting company, really like this one. If I was looking to add something in the industrial sector, this would be high on my watch list. Would like a little bit more of a pullback on this one, but looks like it might be, at least according to the dividend yield theory, 
presenting some value right now. This is the vested interest stock screener. This is how I set up the videos. It's also how I look at a company's stock on a high level to see if I'm interested in investing. You can pause this and go through this. Must meet five of eight to be investable. Must meet six of nine if it's a financial company. I throw in price to book. You can use price to book for this one on any company, but don't just use the one or lower. Compare it to other companies in its sector. One or lower really applies for financial companies. That's why I've got it highlighted in green here. Well, that is it for this one. Always appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community, building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences, stocks like this that we may be watching or that we may be avoiding just our experiences overall and tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. That is what this channel is about. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So let me know what you think of comments down in the comment section below. Are there other companies in the sector that you like better? And also, if you have any suggestions for future topics, companies you'd like me to do a review on in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop that down below in the comment section, and I'll work them into the rotation. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion in investing in your journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk you can lose money. You should never invest any amount you're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Best place your situation and circumstances in a selected criteria or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.